Hello everyone, it's uh, part 16 here. We're still building an STL-based media player that looks an awful lot like Winamp. Um, okay, so first thing we want to get into right here before we do anything else is fix up a terrible mistake from yesterday. So let me go look at this. Um, one of the people commented on the last video correctly that uh, when you have the window for this thing, let's build this real quick, um, we have built this and we moved everything down and put the title bar here, but this is actually not how Winamp works. Win Winamp actually wants this thing to still be the whole window, and then you draw the title bar over this top part. So you do not scooch it down. That was my mistake. I'll leave this one here so we can see the comparison in a moment. So just go back out and fix that up. Let's see, where was it? 102. Okay. We moved all these things from 88 to 102, I believe, because we moved it 14 pixels down. So we're just going to move them all real back. Uh, uh, right back real quick just to pretend this never happened where'd you go okay let's try that again there we go and then this one right here is obnoxiously one pixel off so that becomes 89 and this one was 71 so minus 4 would be 57 57 I think yeah I think that was right yeah okay and then we made the window slightly bigger so we're gonna make it a little less big 130 minus 14 would be 116. It just seems so tiny, but okay. And then when we draw the window, uh, we're drawing the title bar and then the main uh, main window right below it. We're gonna change that. We no longer need to do this because now we're drawing the whole thing again. And we'll draw it first because we draw over top of it. And uh, when you use the SDL render, it's always back to front. The things that you draw first get written over. So we're saying just do it to the whole window from the whole texture. And then after that, we'll draw the title bar on top of it at the top that hasn't changed position. So that should theoretically do it. Let's find out. All right, there we go. Okay, so that's how it should look. That's how Winamp looked too. Let me find the other one. This is how we had it yesterday. So the window is slightly bigger and you know, we had this little piece here where the title bar should be is now that, and it's covering that, and everything looks like it's drawing in the right place. Yeah, okay, good. Let's get rid of these. All right, mischief managed. We didn't even need to, you know. We just pretend that never happened, and that's fine. Okay, um, so let's try and finish up the uh, rest of this today, this title bar. Um... So I guess the first thing I should say is that this is probably, the, that particular mistake was probably why the title bar uh, Atlas image says, read the readme over and over again. Because, <laughs> you know, you make mistakes like this when you don't read this stuff. Uh, I'm not going to learn my lesson. I'm not going to even skim it today. Well, I'm going to skim it today, but I'm not going to really get too far into it. All right, let's see here. Let's get... Atlas, read me. All right. Da, da, da. We have the active, the inactive one. Let's try and get these buttons hooked up. In the top left zone of this file, there's a set of app buttons. The top row are left to right. The Winamp or main menu button. Oops. So I want these things right here. There you go. Winamp or main men menu button. Okay. The minimize button and the close button in their unpressed uh, forms and states. Okay, so there is no maximize button in Winamp. That, that's c common confusion here, I assume. But it's the Winamp button, which is, um, I think, this guy here, right? It seems smaller. Uh, maybe it is. I don't know. Looks can be deceiving. Let's find out. This one is... Once again, my CPU fan has turned on to torture me. I'm having the worst time selecting this. It's going so well today. All right, so there we go. There's that. I think that's the edge, right? There. Okay, so this one is 9x9, nine nine, and this guy over here looks can be deceiving. Is also 9x9. Nine nine. Okay, it does actually fit the whole thing. That's good. Okay, so... It just looks weird because of the blue around it, I guess. Why is my fan going so hard? Okay. Um, do, do, do. Let's see here. 
Okay, so we need these buttons right here. In the top left zone, there's a set of app buttons. Win app button, or main menu button. Minimize and close. Let's get those hooked in here. Where's my text editor? Okay. So these are just, come back here, there you go. We have our skin, which is the whole UI. And we have our buttons and our sliders, so we're going to add some new buttons here. Let's see. You can even put these at the top because they're really, if you want to think about this, is like top to bottom. So, when you have skin, button, uh, what do you call it? System? What, what was the name of this thing? Winamp or main menu button. We'll call it system for now. That might overlap with something else. We'll see. Winamp system. We can always change it, you know. Minimize and close. Minimize and close. Yes, button. Let's see what kind of disaster I caused by inserting that at the beginning of this thing. Oh, probably not things we in, we initialize them specifically. Yeah, okay. So let's add some new buttons to this thing. These are the ones we already know work, so we'll stick those down there. And and it's skin button. I know y'all just love watching me count out like pixels in this thing. Uh, okay, so we're gonna do this. The button is a button system. This comes from texture title bar because it's embedded. In this thing here, okay, it's gonna be that guy. Title bar. Uh, we're gonna set this to null for now because I'm not actually going to hook it up just yet because we're still just trying to get this set up. And then it's the width and height, which are nine and nine. Let's see, width and height. Then the destination on this thing is what? Destination in the window would actually be a better way to say that. So. So there's our whole thing here. It's going to go down. It's going to go down three, I think, from the top. And how many from the side of this thing? Six in? No, that can't be right. Hang on. Oh, it is six. Okay. All right, six. Six it is. This destination source unpressed is, of course, zero zero because it's this top left corner of this thing. So we'll call that zero zero. Okay. And then the pressed one is zero, and since this thing is nine, I guess it's going to be nine. But we'll just make sure I'm not crazy. Nine nine. Okay, so it'll be the ninth one down. Zero and nine. Okay. Okay, good. So there we have a system button, and then the other two. What I call these things? It was minimized and close. Yeah. I'll just make a button right here, just so we don't forget we have to do this. And they they come from the same texture. They're on the title bar. The null will be what happens when we it will be a function when we click it, but we're not doing that right now. I think all these buttons are nine by nine. Let's see. Nine. They sure seem to be. Okay, so cool. That makes that easy for the sake of math. And we need to know how far into this thing it is. So let's get this right here. Come on over. Oh wait, so wait, there's three buttons over here? Did I just do this wrong? Let me see if I just did this wrong. This is probably why they tell you to read the README. Okay. Well, okay, this does seem to be the minimize button, so I think we're still on the right track for now, but we're gonna have to look at this in one second here. I think it's, I'm gonna go and read this in a moment, but uh, I think it's minimize, like you want the thing totally off your desktop to go into the taskbar or whatever. <clears throat> and then this is turned into window shade mode, and this is to close the window. Uh, I was not a careful reader. Or left to right, the win it. main button, minimize and close buttons in their unpressed states. Right around them are the same buttons in their pressed states, which is kind of what we thought. Then the third row, we have the windshade button, and it's pressed in unpressed state. 
left to right. So, so pressed, unpressed, oh, I'm sorry, unpressed, pressed, and then there's your window shade button. There's that mystery extra button we don't know about, which is this guy right here. Okay, so we're going to get to that. But for now, let's see, we're at the edge there. Okay, so this is... Um, 244 pixels in. Oops. So it's destined, let's see, so. Click function, width and height is still 99. Destination, what did I say it was? 244. And I'm assuming that's three, so we're gonna leave that there. And then it's unpressed thing is, let's make sure I get the right one here this guy unpressed starts at zero and then we're nine over because this one was nine by nine uh, let's see source of it unpressed zero and nine and then the pressed one would be nine pixels down so just it would just be the one right below it nine pixels below it so nine nine okay that should get me going did i just fill that into the wrong one i totally did okay congratulations you are now the minimize button Close. Feeling a little distracted today. I don't know if you've all noticed. I'll make it work anyway. All right. So the close button. Let's figure that out real fast here. Just the guy. Just not this guy. That's the window shade button. So we want to go to this guy, and he is at 264. This was 244. 264, and probably three, same as that guy. Um, these buttons are wrong. Let me get that. It's still nine by nine, but the and that's. Wait, did I do this wrong? Two sixty four x and then three. Okay, that's it. That that figures that out. Okay, I think did I do that right? With destination, I think that's right. We're three down. Looks like three. We're gonna pretend it's three until proven otherwise. All right, and then we need where it's. Delete a thing here. That's what my, my problem is. Okay. Three, and then we'll add one here. Okay, so this one over here is the one with the block at the top. No, it's the one with the X. It's the X we want. So it'd be that. Yeah, okay, that, and then the X, which would be nine o 0 over, 9 over, 18 over. So unpressed is 18. Put that in there. Y is zero, and then same over here, 18 and nine. Okay, so I think that will probably do it, unless I screwed it up. Let's see what it looks like, and we'll go from there. Will it compile? Let's find out. Well, it kind of compiled. I put the wrong button there. Still move it. Well, here's a, here's a bug we definitely need to fix now. These button clicks are not getting through to this because hit testing. It thinks it's part of the title bar, which it is, to be fair, but we're going to have to fix that before we do anything else. Clearly, I got the wrong button there. That should be over there. So let's figure that out, too. All right, a couple of things to fix here. A couple of things to fix. Hit testing first, because that's going to annoy me. All right, so right now our hit testing says if you're less than 14, if you're less than the size of the title bar, then say it's draggable. And that works when you can drag the whole title bar, but this is not going to work for us when there's an area that we do not want to be draggable. Area X is greater than... Okay, let's figure this out real quick. So let's say anything past that button can be dragged. And if we want to get fancy, it should be anything on that side of the button too, but I'm really not feeling that fancy right now. Well, actually, you know what? We Let's just break this into a few things. Okay, so if area is greater than or equal to 14, let me get that back, hang on. It's greater than 14 then don't test anymore just return immediately because clearly you're not in the title bar 
definitely not in the title bar. Let's use friendly old C, not C++ comments, just to keep things nice. Okay, now, if, if you're still here, if you didn't hit this return, then you are in the title bar. Come on, comments, if uh, still in, well, we are in the title bar, make sure we're not in a button. If, now I still has a thing for this. Oh, this is SDL3. I do this every time. SDL2, include SDL, is it rectangle? Point, there we go. SDL point and rect. Where'd you go? Okay, if this point, which is area in this case, if area, is, if the thing we're clicking is inside, do we have this as a rect in here? That would be super nice. We do, okay, source rect, unpress desk rect, that's what we want, okay. If it's in one of these, we call it desk rect inside the button. All right, and then, okay, so we want skin, okay, so it's this thing here. So skin, buttons, one of these, system or whatever, what I call it, desk rect, desk rect. It's an address. All right, let's take all that gobbledygook. I just made a few notes. I'm just going to move it actually to the right place here. Point and rect. There we go. So if this point is inside of that destination rectangle, then we're definitely not in the title bar. We're, we're in a Button. Don't drag from the buttons. Right, for what was the name of this thing? What did we call this thing? Skim, skin button ID. Just need the magical letter I for loop counter. If I equals and we'll keep these together in the enumeration so that this works. Well, i is less than or equal to button close. Kind of gross, but we can do that. All right, is inside of this. Done, cool. Okay, so having scratched that all out, I don't know that I'm totally love this, but we're gonna, I, I feel like this is a little messier than I like, but this is the basic idea now. The hit test is gonna come through, say, if we're not in the title bar area, we're below that in the window, it's normal, just treat it like a normal mouse thing, no big deal. Um, if you're still here after that, then go through each of the buttons that could be in that title bar, check if the click is in any inside of any of those buttons, and if so, treat it as normal so that we can handle those button clicks. Otherwise, if you're still here at the end, go for drag wheel. Now, I'm not a super big fan of this, the way this looks, and that I would like this to go in the opposite direction. Instead of being like, you know, this logic happens if you're still here, then this logic happens if you're still here. And I'm not a big fan of that, but it's gonna work for now, and we can clean that up later if we want to. Maybe we never will. Um, this is definitely going to cause us a problem when we get into window shade mode, but we are not there today, so we're going to leave it alone. Um, let's see if that fixes our problem, though. Okay, the buttons are still in the wrong place here. we got to fix that, but I can still drag from the title bar, and I can push this button. I cannot drag from the button. It still functions like a button over here. Oops, that's not a button because we've not hooked up the window shade button at all yet. Close button is there, and I can. it'll highlight because it's clicking... When I, when I click it, it's showing me, these don't look like this on the Atlas, of course, but it's it's going to the pressed button. That's why it's getting a gold box around it, because that's what this bitmap has when you click on it. Just, that's there, too. Okay, I clearly just put that in the wrong place, so let's fix that while we're at here, too. Okay. Where are we at? Dun, 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 dun. Um, okay. Okay. 
thing go. There we are, okay. System one is there, destination is Did I put that in the right place. I have to keep copying this. That's the problem with these functions that have a thousand parameters to them that are all just arbitrary numbers. Now I we're I know we're using this like a constructor construction a constructor type thing, but it drives me nuts because I have to go back and look at this every time. Okay. Width and height is right. Destination is right where it is in there, where it's pressed. Okay, so that's in the right place. Minimize is going with height. Destination's correct. This is... Oh, these are backwards. That's my problem. Okay, so this should be... X is 9 because we're moving over across the left, and Y is still 0. And then the next one is the pressed one. It should be X is right there, Y is right there. Okay, I think I just had that one wrong. So let me see what this looks like now that we compile. Now I take this thing out and compile it. Alright, so we have our window. That is clicking correctly, because you can see it put that box, which since the thing in the middle didn't change, that means we click the right we have the right thing there for clicking. There you go, that's the right thing now. And this one's not hooked up so it doesn't do anything. And then this one appears to be right. Okay, cool. All right, so let's hook those buttons up. All right, so do do do. Whoops, come back. Knit. Oh my gosh, Ryan, pull it together. And all right, <laughs> failing to pull it together. All right, this is going. Like this. So these nulls now need to be something click you know, a function that's called when we click on this but I don't have anything to hook up to the system thing yet I don't know when we will we will at some point maybe I guess but right now we don't minimize clicked and then close quick clicked close clicked all right let's implement those up here pause clicked stop clicked well let's just put them above these things it's fine these are just void functions that take a no parameters, so I call it minimized, clicked, and the other one was called closed, close clicked. So um, for now, to keep this simple, when we click the close button, you can you could call SDL destroy window destroy window destroy window on the window and that'll make it go away which is something that closing will do but um, what we're gonna actually do is push an event here oh, SDL 0 I don't know if this is strictly important but SDL 0 is a macro that will just zero out a structure without you having to specify the size of the structure it takes care of all that for you a little macro magic for you I'm gonna say event type equals SDL quit and then we're going to just push that event right on there and in theory that should put onto the event queue an SDL quit so the next time that we run our event handler our event loop where we read in any events it will find SDL quit and it'll do all the magic that we normally do to terminate the program now this may get fancier in the long run but for now we only have one window we want the program to go away when we click that quote close button, so that's that's going to settle us out for now. Let's build this real quick and make sure it works. Oh, nope, I failed. Minimize clicked. Undeclared. Well, that's definitely declared. Because compiler is always wrong. It's never me. Minimize clicked. Spelled it wrong. So blah, blah, blah. These are not hooked up, so you can click them, but they don't do anything. But when you click close, boom, program goes away. Went back. Process ended. Yep, perfect. Okay, good. Uh, let's look up minimize real quick here. Minimize clicked. SDL minimize window. This is as simple as it comes. Did I call it window? I'm going to assume it's window as a global variable. Let's find out. All right, here we go. I'm going to click the minimize button. Did I miss it? There it goes. Boop! And shot off to my bar over here where 
There we go, it's right there. And we can unminimize it and it comes back. There you go. Easy peasy. We gotta get an icon for this. We'll just try to get that next time too. But that's that's all there is to it. And that's as simple as it is to minimize a window in SDL. So Alright, um we're at twenty five minutes. Didn't get everything I wanted to do done today, but this has been a breakneck speed of me fumbling around for 25 minutes. I think it's a good time to stop. Uh, let's see where we left this. We added three buttons, uh, two of which are hooked up now. I don't know what we're going to do with the system button yet. We'll have to think about that for a bit, because usually that would be like a Windows menu, and I don't really know I want to do a pop-up type of thing. But I guess we could if we had to. Um, we fixed the hit test thing so that you can use those buttons hooked up minimization, we hooked up the close button, so it's functioning again like a real window title bar should, right? Uh, we had to adjust all our stuff back for our previous mistake and how Winamp skins work, and that's as much as we got done today. But you know what? A little bit of progress. You could eat your lunch and watch this video and then go on with your day, and if we go in little baby steps like this, I'm okay with that. So, um, okay, let's end it here. We'll come back. We'll do a little bit more tomorrow or whenever we get to this next one, and I'll see you then. Take care.